Hey guys, what's up? Hunter Hunter 2011 episode 137 review. Whoa, I finally got that right because for the past couple days I've been saying the third digit of every episode number title. I swear to God, that's always happened. It's really annoying, dude. Okay, on to the episode at hand. The episode was actually good. This was a really good first episode of this arc. I'm not joking, this episode was really good. I loved it. It was awesome. It's so much characterization. It's so... Ow, I hit my hand on the fan. Starting off with the opening and the ending. I want to give my brief thoughts on that. The opening visuals were very nice. I can see that they amped up the animation and it just... It looked very sleek, and it looked very nice. I loved it. Oh my god, as like just characters that we've never seen before, and as characters that we have seen, but they've just been gone. Like Togashi. <laughs> uh, like Leorio. He's coming back. Leorio, my favorite character in this series, is coming back. Yes. So, the animation in the opening, with the visuals, very nice. And the animation in the episode as well, very nice. Um, the ending, it's Hiri Itai again. I do like that ending. I would even go so far as to say that I love that ending. But, I was expecting something new. And for visual, and for less simple visuals because honest to god it was the four main characters in tuxedos standing on a cloud like not standing on a cloud but with the landscape changing that's it i guess they're going for a more simple ending i mean keep in mind i still liked it because i love that song but they're going for i can see they're going for a more simple ending because you know the anime's ending um, it hasn't been confirmed whether it's just going to go on a hiatus and it'll come back. Because we don't know that. Because we all know Togashi, and he likes his hiatuses. He likes to take two year hiatuses and never come back. Just go play Dragon Quest. Ah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, with Togashi, we never know. So the anime, due to its popularity, it'll probably come back. But it's probably going to be in, like, year. It's probably going to be, like, years later. So, with the ending, I still enjoyed it, but I was expecting a new ending, but keep in mind, I still enjoyed it, because it was cool to see all the four main characters be together for once. They still aren't. Fuck. Shit. But it was cool to see it in the ending. On to the episode. We see all the Zodiacs, and I finally remembered a cow's name, or in the Crunchyroll translation, it was translated to Ox, but his name is Mizai Stone. Yes, I remember that. I remember it now. Yes. Okay. But, basically, all the Zodiacs are gathered together, and that's awesome. And I'm wearing this awesome hat, because of Jean, the boar, although this is a water buffalo hat. It's somewhat close. So I'm wearing this hat in commemoration of Jean. I'll probably wear it in more videos if anyone wants me to. But I don't care if I don't request because I probably won't. But this hat is just sick. Love it. Okay. But we finally meet in the anime Pariston Hill. Yeah. You think darkness is your ally? I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Okay. That was completely irrelevant. But we finally meet Pariston Hill. This dude. I can see that many people don't like him because I actually I was interested to see what people like thought of the first episode of the arc. I want to see people's reaction because of course I'm a reaction man, but. Could see many people 
who are anime only watchers of Hunter x Hunter do not like Paris than already. And honestly, that's that's a human thought. Like, if you don't like Pariston for the first time you see him, I can wholeheartedly understand you. Because that was my first thought when I read the manga. But trust me, please keep my word for, for this, man. When you read the... When you go through this arc, you will start to like the character. And he's, like, way, way, way deeper than this. Like, there's way more to this fucker. As you can see from the first episode that he was introduced, there's more to this motherfucker. This dude is crazy. Even from Mizai Stone, we figured out that before Pariston became vice chairman, the disappearance of hunters was only, well, let's say, it's not a percentage, but only, like, 0.6 hunters, I guess that's how it is, were, disappeared. But a year, I think. Yeah, it was a year. And ever since Pariston became vice chairman, that amount has increased tenfold. So that's six people per year. Over the course of three years, over 18 people have disappeared. Ever since Pariston became vice chairman. So that is crazy. That's fucking crazy. Oh. Mmm. Parrot. I just can't because... I'm thinking of the manga now. Of course, get the manga out of here right now. Because it's anime only. It's just, he's so, this character, I'm not spoiling anything, of course, I don't, I don't mean to sound conceited at all, but this character is getting so hyped up, and it's crazy, so we still don't know shit about him, but he's just crazy, and we see that he's crazy, because he's saying shit like how Natero, he was way too strong, and he couldn't sympathize, or even, well, rather, empathize with the weak, but Pariston, since he's weak, he can empathize with the people, but that means he can gain their support and easily manipulate them. Like, God, Pariston, he's crazy, dude. I love it. I'm liking where this arc is going, and honestly, with this arc, it's probably like my third favorite arc in the series. Depending on how the arc in the manga is going, um, because of course, as you can all guess at the moment, Chimera Ant arc is my favorite arc in Hunter x Hunter. I don't care what you people say, because I hear many people saying, oh, it's too dragged out and it deviates a No, no. Chimera Ant arc, my favorite. Second is York New. Fucking, I love York. I loved York New. I love that. It was so awesome. Because, I mean, Corolla. Freaking Zoldis. Yes. And third is Election. And fourth would have to be, you know, Hunter Exams. So, the Election arc is my third favorite at the moment. So, seeing it animated is going to be just a joyride. It's going to be amazing. Okay. Eight minutes in. Holy shit. Okay. Gene, this guy, even, he's on the same level of hype as Pariston. Oh my god, he's been hyped up for the whole series, and to see him now, he is nothing to screw with. He is a true hunter, because he completely manipulated all the Zodiacs, single-handedly. Freaking, freaking Gene, he's the reason why I'm wearing this hat right now. That bull by the horns, or the boar, in this case. But we see he completely manipulated this because he knew that Cheadle, which is the dog, would most likely propose a system of voting in between all the Zodiacs. Well, it was like a draw, 
in a sense. Like you write your name on a piece of paper along with your rules. So basically deciding whose rules should we follow. And every put, everyone puts a piece of paper in to the trash bin. And we they had to choose a third party, which was beans, beans um, to pick from the trash bin. And he picks it and it's Gene. And basically the two main rules here that I that really stood out for me were how both what was it both like regular hunters basically like anyone could run for chairman you could both vote and run for the chairman okay um what was the other one shit oh i see how any anonymous votes will be invalidated and how you have to write your name on a slip of paper but this also works to Pariston's benefit since he can easily manipulate the people as we see in the beginning of this episode he manipulates people we don't know how like how he has the support of the people is just beyond me but gene he's saying this for the simple fact that it's no fun if you can't know who's voting gene dude we can see he's like go in a sense we see that gene's insanely smart like he completely predicted all of this that she would propose this that just how he put in the fifth rule of how he'll be the um basically like the voting community leader or whatever the title is called how everyone would just boom, be completely flustered and when he stated that oh no i'm not gonna do it, people will be more in favor of his rules and that completely worked completely and utterly and he even knew he was gonna win like yes that is a true hunter he even states himself that if you can i forgot what the quote was exactly i don't know it for verbatim but if you can always get your target if you can lure your target in then that's a true hunt you're a true hunter who his target is or what his target is we don't know but it's very interesting because we see just this awesome gene motherfucker yes i love gene so much he has the potential to be my favorite character as well as everyone else's favorite character because this dude this dude is freaking insane and i we still have yet to see his power we, fuck. i can only assume that it's insane like all the charts yes gene freaking freaks okay so basically wow that was only the first half of the episode holy shit okay so basically that was mainly political stuff going on moving on to the second half it's basically everyone drawing their ballots voting for really anyone because you can vote for pretty much anyone as we see because they're like votes for fucking gone and hanzo what what okay but it was cool because we got to see a lot and i mean a lot of familiar faces like it was interesting because i was watching this episode with my brother and i say like hey look there's that guy hey look there's that guy Ooh, it's beast gay oh look it's wing it's uh freaking hanzo and all those guys from the um the hunter exam arc and it was just it was really cool to see and you know what's going on when he's soka your favorite pedophile and that came out <laughs> but i mean like, he's so good this dude is a full-on pedophile or a pansexual like this dude wants to fuck everything in sight he he gets a boner for strong fighters like he really does it's fucking it's hilarious like remember and i'm deviating i really am but like remember in the um, heavens arena arc when he was about to fight go and he's like oh i'm getting turned on and there's like that jojo's bizarre adventure type of shit going on where it's like shring like it's like the text is representing the character's action like we can assume that's a boner like he's thrusting shit like your favorite pedophile he's your favorite clown pedophile like 
seeing Hisoka come back really brought a smile to my face because you know what this dude is one of my favorites again Gene he has the potential to be one of my favorite characters or maybe even my favorite is that bias based on his power and him basically manipulating everything in his favor maybe but still Hisoka is the best pedophile class. he is the true pedophile although I do like Orochimaru and Naruto and arguably Orochimaru is the best villain in Naruto that's not even an argument that's a statement that's a true statement that's true but he was inspired off Hisoka so Hisoka is the true pedophile if you can name Hisoka's ancestor like of anime like if Hisoka was not the first pedophile then who the hell was it because I'm interested to hear that and is he better than Hisoka because Hisoka at the moment is the true pedophile okay that sounded so fucking weird but you know what it's Hisoka he's the best and he's basically just gauging everyone's power and the main reason why he came there is because he wanted to fight Jean but from what we've seen and how Jean has been so hyped up for the entirety of the series, Hisoka would get one shot easily. Easily. Like, Hisoka could do all this, like, bungee gum stuff, which is awesome because I love Hisoka. Jean would just one shot him. How? Who knows? Like, who really? No one knows at this point. But Jean, you just go up to Hisoka and flick, like, done. It's finished. And Hisoka would probably love it. Obviously. So Hisoka coming back. Big treat. Illumi coming back. You know what? It was cool. But I was more psyched for Hisoka. Because you know what? Hisoka is awesome. And basically, the episode ends off with the exposition between Hisoka and Illumi. And how Illumi, he's in touch with everything. Like, of course, he's a goddamn assassin. Why wouldn't he be? Basically, he's he knows everything about the Command Ants, everything that's happened with Matero, with Gon and Lua, just everything that's been happening throughout the course of the Khmer Ant arc, and just the Khmer Ants in general. But Hisoka, this dude, Hisoka, main man, did not know anything about this. Like, this dude does not watch the news. He sits under a rock, and every time he... Like, senses Corolo. Like, his Corolo senses are on. His dick twitches a bit and turns into a full on boner. And he goes for Corolo. Like, I'm coming for you, Corolo. Like, that's how it goes. That's how it is. But he knew absolutely nothing about the Chimera Ant invasion. And he perhaps he would have known if he would have just stopped chasing after Corolla. But we know Isoka, he doesn't do that shit. Why? Because he wants to fight Corolla. Rolo. And that brings up the, this question as well. Is Grappi's judgment chain off of Corolla? Like, did they get that Nen Exorcist to Corolla? And even though I'm caught up with the story, again, I don't mean to sound conceited because I hate doing this, but sometimes it's necessary to bring up. We still don't know this in the manga. We still don't know. Anything about Corolla yet? Anything about the Nan Exorcist? The confrontation between these two? What actually happened? Did they get the Nan off? Like, we don't know yet. And it's probably not relevant in this arc. Who knows? It might be. And I mean the arc in the manga. But who knows? We don't know yet. But we can assume that since Hisoka is still like, chasing after Corolla, then perhaps the Nen has been taken off because I don't know how long that Khmer and invasion was I'm assuming it was like half a year I want to say it's half a year four months to six months um yeah four to six months I think if anyone knows correct me but I think it was four to six months so we can assume during that period of time that an exorcist got to Corolla, and that's why Hisoka's chasing Corolla, like, all the damn time, and just, goddamn, Hisoka, he's really concerned for his, 
these targets. Going to Kilua. Like, this is my. This dude is a fucking pedophile. <laughs> like, we, we know this shit. We know this shit. But he's actually concerned for going and Kilua's safety. Which is understandable because he's trying to, like, prep these guys up. He's waiting for the fruit to ripen. Sounds fucking weird, but whatever. Goddamn. <laughs> Just goddamn. Yeah. Okay, that's all I can say. But with Alumi, he's saying that Kilua's gonna die. So, what does that mean? We don't know. Like, we know Gon's in a critical state, and he might die. But Kilua. Like, what, what's going on with him? It has to do something with Kilua saying that he's going to heal Gon. Like, how we. Who knows at this point? I'm sure. I'm sure anime only viewers like you have like certain hints thrown at you, but at the very end of the episode, which is a shocker, with the opening, it may have spoiled something. It may have made many people figure it out, because I watched this. I first watched this episode with my brother, and then my other brother was watching it um, right next to me, and my youngest brother guessed, "Oh, that's." Kilua's sister, and of course I corrected, no, that's a brother, how? I, I don't know, <laughs> it's the same thing with the other one, you know, the, the one that joined the Phantom Troop, it's, I thought it was a girl, I recently found out it was a guy, like, wait, what the fuck, and the same thing with this one, like, I thought it was a girl, but it's a guy, like, wait, what the fuck, like, Togashi, he likes transvestites, yet we've confirmed these guys, these two Characters, genders, but not never Pito. Like we're never, we're never gonna know. Probably not. I'm. I want to say it's a girl. Please let it be a girl. Damn it. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> okay. But apparently, and I'm not sure if this brother. I'm still not sure if this brother is younger than the one that joined the Phantom Troop. I think he's actually older based on the wiki page, but that's still really not convincing enough because it just seems a bit weird and off to me, but this brother, I think Illumi either said it's the younger brother or the youngest, I'm not sure, but nonetheless, the Zoldex have another son or another brother in the family. Now, what does that mean exactly? Like, why hasn't this brother been mentioned for the entirety of the series? And we've seen that picture multiple times, but even when I was watching the episodes, I didn't even notice that. Like, I was assuming it was some some kind of butler, like, I, I don't even know, dude. But I didn't notice that. But, just Jesus Christ, and what relevance does this brother have to the series? So, that's very interesting to think about as well. And based on the preview, we're going to see a lot of shit as to why... This brother hasn't been relevant at all for the entirety of the series. Um, why it hasn't even been mentioned in the Zoldek family. And why Illumi wants to kill this younger brother. So we can assume that the brother is a... Is bleh, we can assume that the younger brother is a threat in some way. How? We don't know yet. Gotta keep watching these awesome episodes. And that's basically it. Overall, this was a long ass review, holy shit, but I just love Hunter Hunter. I have to go into depth with stuff like that. And overall, this was a really good episode. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next episodes to come. And it sucks that the anime, it's gonna end during this arc. Damn shame. I hope it can continue. Hopefully, it'll go on a hiatus for a couple of years more than a couple of years and then come back stronger than ever so gosh he doesn't go on more goddamn hiatuses i swear to god dude i will find you i will find you and i will make you write more stuff because i can't kill you because that would be really bad okay again really good episode can't wait for the next one man and animation
It's been good. All right. See you guys later.